Glove World was made because there is a medical facility on land and they've dumped their garbage into the ocean containing rubber gloves and other harmful chemicals. Bikini Bottom used the gloves to create a theme park with rides and glove themed everything and that's how we got Glove World and the creatures in Rock Bottom. Now the rock bottom episode itself is the first time we see Glove World, but we don't really get to see it because they were just leaving. We don't truly get to see Glove World until season five in Roller Cowards. It starts with SpongeBob reading a bedtime story to Gary when Patrick crashes through his wall like the Kool-Aid man holding a tiny TV. He shows SpongeBob a commercial for Glove World's new roller coaster, the fiery fist of pain that will be opening the next day. But that night, both SpongeBob and Patrick have the same nightmare where they're at Glove World, but everything turns demonic and they ride the fiery fist of pain just to end up falling into their own graves. They both wake up totally freaked out, but don't actually tell each other about how scared they really are. I mean, when they get to Glove World, SpongeBob says he left his ticket at home and Patrick says he ate his, when in reality, they were just lying trying to find any excuse to not go inside the park. I guess we're not going to be riding the fist of pain today. Hold on a second. Here's your tickets in your back pockets. When they get inside and see the huge line for the new ride, to pass time, they decide to roam the park and get on the kitty rides. But then they run into Glovey Glove, a literal glove mascot. I completely forgot how iconic this scene was until I watched it a few days ago. How do I look? Wow, I look great! They get on a ride called The Mitten, but even that scares them. They procrastinate more and more, but eventually, there's an announcement that the park will close in five minutes. So they rush to get on the ride, and as they buckle in, the ride breaks down, and they finally confess that they were just both scared. But then the ride suddenly gets fixed and they have to just go through with it now. Now the ride itself is absolutely insane. By the end, they actually do end up losing their spines, but are super proud of themselves for facing their fears. It was honestly a great episode and rewatching it was a lot of fun, but this is also what started making me question this place. Ow! 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 You like that? You like that? Like I know most theme parks have, well, you know, a theme but gloves? See, in the US, medical facilities dumping things into the ocean is extremely regulated. There are strict regulations under the Clean Water Act to prevent this kind of stuff from happening. Like if a facility is caught dumping hazardous waste into water, they can actually face jail time. But here's the thing, I cannot say the same for other countries. Like there was this crazy incident in Indonesia back in 2020 where hospitals were caught dumping COVID-19 stuff into the ocean. So like masks, gowns, shoe covers, and gloves. Like, bro, can you believe that? They were just tossing all this hazardous stuff into the ocean. So it's like the residents of Bikini Bottom don't even realize this, and there aren't many episodes on global warming or pollution, but there is one random short called The Endless Summer. It's like a two minute episode, but it's really interesting. It starts with SpongeBob on his way to work and he notices this big factory pipe on top of the Krusty Krab. Turns out Mr. Krabs is using this setup to pump carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Why? So he can open a year round pool at the Krusty Krab and make more money. SpongeBob, not knowing about global warming, gets on board with the idea and even figures out a way to ramp up the process. Next thing you know, there's like 14 boats pumping even more carbon dioxide into the air. Then Mr. Krabs sees SpongeBob throwing a tire into a pile of burning tires, saying that he's helping to cause more global warming. A bunch of Bikini Bottom residents come running and Mr. Krabs thinks they're heading to his pool. But Patrick tells him they're actually moving north because it's too hot to live there anymore. The episode then ends with Spongebob excited to jump into the pool, but the water evaporates instantly and he just lands painfully in the empty pool. It's not really a classic Spongebob episode, but it definitely makes the point about the consequences of environmental neglect. Just throwing another tire on the fire for global warming, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> This could be the reason why a lot of fish in Bikini Bottom don't actually sit to even consider that Glove World is actually just pollution because they don't really even know what that is. But I don't know. I like to think that they know it's pollution and they're just doing the best they can with it by making a theme park out of it. But I can't say the same about Rock Bottom. See, obviously pollution like straws, plastic bags, pretty much any trash is bad for the ocean. But if a medical facility is throwing out gloves, you don't think they would have also thrown out a lot worse things like chemical waste. See, in Spongebob, we have certain creatures from certain places that come to mind when I think of this stuff. Rock bottom. 
this super eerie place that spongebob accidentally ended up in at one point it's this dark deep sea area way different from the sunny bikini bottom the atmosphere there is really gloomy with a lot of strange bioluminescent plants and deep sea creatures i mean dude this whole place just feels isolated and spooky with the main colors just being dark blues and purples, giving it this like really unsettling vibe. And it gets me thinking like if a medical facility is dumping waste, this is probably the result of this. The first time we see Rock Bottom is the episode, well, Rock Bottom, but if we skip to season 13, Mr. Krabs gets the bright idea to start a Krusty Krab food truck because he's jealous of another food truck stealing his customers. So Mr. Krabs unveils this old beat up food truck and puts Squidward in charge of driving it while SpongeBob navigates. They drive all over Bikini Bottom trying to sell Krabby Patties, but keep getting outdone by other food trucks. But desperate, SpongeBob and Squidward decide to try their luck at Rock Bottom. They drive around, including the mall and even a cemetery, but can't find a single customer. They finally spot this weird fish named Bert and chase him all over Rock Bottom, but he keeps disappearing, almost like he has superpowers. Eventually, they do catch up to Bert at the bus stop and he angrily asks them why they've been chasing him. Turns out, he wasn't even waving at them, he was just drying his armpits. SpongeBob tries to sell him a Krabby Patty, but then a bus arrives with all Rock Bottomies who had been at the Krusty Krab. And if you look and listen closely, they all sound like zombies, bro. <laughs> These characters have this deep, almost incomprehensible way of speaking, adding to the overall bizarre feel of this place. It almost feels like where the undesirables are kept. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, how does this have to do with medical facilities dumping waste into the ocean? Well, it's actually kind of scary. So a bunch of chemicals from things we use every day like medications and personal care products end up in the water. Our wastewater plants can't filter them out, so these chemicals get into the rivers and oceans and it just creates a mess for the fish in some pretty bad ways, like disrupting their hormones and causing many developmental and reproductive issues. Imagine fish that can't reproduce properly or develop normally because they're swimming in a chemical soup. Then there's the worst, mercury, which is super toxic. It mostly comes from industrial sources and small scale gold mines, but fish absorb this stuff and it builds up in their system. And this leads to some really nasty side effects like physical deformities and just more behavioral changes. So when I look at rock bottom through the lens of these horror stories, like the residents with their freaky looks, bizarre speech, it's like they're mirroring the actual fish that get messed up and explains why they talk so weird. It's almost as if the show is showing us the darker side of what pollution does to the ocean by showing us rock bottom and glove world. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.